I'm not very good at this recording job, I really am, uh, well, well, here we are, I'm going to try and tell you about this uh, picture, the, the, the film. Uh, now here you see us in Bedfordshire, we had a cottage uh, there and we used to go there and there is me and Johnny and Rose sitting on the cart going out to the harvest field in an old world scene. We used to spend a lot of time at the cottage on the farm nearby. In fact, that's where we got our taste for farming and you can see here now it started 54, 60 years ago. In fact, I can't remember when it was, but it was in about 1938, 39 and these, look, there's dear little Primrose, the apple of Gimpa's eye. Isn't she a sweet little girl with her little bonnet? There's me at the head in charge, you see, of the horse, and then there's Johnny Tell. And the other far, oh dear little Primrose, isn't she sweet? Look at that. Straight out of a Victorian film, she is a sweet little girl, the apple of her father's eye. Coloured film in those days was very difficult to get hold of, and I'm afraid most of this film will be in black and white. Isn't that a lovely scene? Not a very big load, really. What you might fit onto a decent bale loader, I should think, in one saying is, but anyway. Yeah, isn't that, doesn't that remind you, Les, of old times? Old standard forts and David and Rose and their mummy. Where's Jonathan? There we are, empty, off to the field again. I expect Johnny's driving, he usually did, he usually manages to get up to the front. Yes, there he is. Johnny was always in trouble, it didn't matter what was happening, Johnny was probably up to mischief somewhere. Another picture of dear little Rose in the amongst the corn, look at that. I think all those rows of sheaves have got to be stooped up. Do you call them stooking or shocking? We used to call them shocking in Bedford. Bedfordshire, this is where these farms. This I don't remember this, I can still remember this. Just outside our cottage, a couple of old sows, one with a litter, came, obviously escaped from some farm, came out round the corner, out of the wood, and then down the road, and we never saw them again. Oh God, Johnny, that's not very good, sticking along the end there. I suppose it's all right, as long as it's standing up. <coughs> oh dear, little Primrose again, been fooling about under a stook of corn. Oh, look, there's Gimpa. Young Gimpa, he always wore shorts in his, his holidays. Khaki shorts, I've still got them in the drawer. But I don't like people to see my legs. I wonder what the farmer would think if we'd been fooling about with his sheaves. Because this was on a farm just outside the back of our cottage. Oh, we're just starting a stack there now. Trouble is, I'm looking at this in a tiny little picture on my computer and it's very difficult to see what's what. We'll try and get a little bit nearer. There's me there. Yes, there am I. Oh God, it looks as if I've never handled a sheep before. Look at that, I'm walking back. Oh my God, look at the effort of doing that. Up over your head. Surprised they didn't tell me how to do it properly. Doing something that he shouldn't do. I don't know where I am. Is that me? No, that's not me. Now this old chap was a schoolmaster because all sorts of old people used to come and help at harvest time. And that fellow with the waistcoat was a schoolmaster who'd never been in the harvest field before. See how he puts the sheaves up, any old oh. oh, we're shutting out. Must be lunchtime. Isn't that a nice little scene with dear little Rosie again? Don't chase the lambs. There we are. Johnny driving as usual. There's one of the farmers, Eric and little Rose. Was a decent load of sheaves. They always on this farm. They always used to have two-wheel carts. On that other farm, which was on the other side of the village, they always had wagons. This farm was a whipsnade where the zoo is. Oh, 
We spent a lot of time at harvest time and always seemed to be driving horses and carts about with loads or without loads. Oh well, look, there's the old man actually doing, doing a bit of loading. Yeah, you ought to get the cart a bit nearer to the stooks. Not putting him up badly though, is he? There's one of the farmers loading. I used to usually get the job of loading because I learned how to load a, a two-wheel load of sheaves, two-wheel cart load of sheaves. Suppose we'd just finished the field there and we were all going back to the rickyard. There's only just a piss pot full of sheaves on the top there. That in fact's going up the hill and the Whipsnade Common. Now this was on the other farm in the village. And we got into a colour film again. There's the chap from the farm who used to deliver the milk every day. I remember that woman there. She smelt of B.O. a bit and her name was Maureen, that girl. And there's little Rose in there. The other chap was called Henry who was driving it and he was a German refugee. He went away to America after the war and was never heard of again. That was the view from the bedroom of our country cottage. Not many sheaves in that field. Stooks are miles apart. Oh God. Fooling about again. That was our dog, George. A Welsh corgi that fought with any dog he would find, especially if they were bigger. This was a special little rehearsed scene. Gimpa always used like used to like to rehearse his little cine film scenes. Good thing the farmer's nowhere near. Playing about with the sheaves, oats I think, shaking out all the corn. Dear little Rose. Where's my friend Jones? He used to come and spend lots of holidays with us. His father was an old bugger and his mother died when he was born. Ah, oh, now we're working on the land. A pair of horses harrowing. Oh, looks like we've finished. Steady old job. Looks like we're harrowing down the potato ridges or something. I can't remember. There's Big Brother with little little rows along beside him. That's right, turning round at the end. Oh God, look, it's Rose! God, Rose is taking him on by herself. God, the lines are getting all mixed up. Oh, come on, Rose. God, I think the horses are pulling her on the line. Oh no, she's got going again now. Come on, come on. Oh, go keep up to the mark. Oh God, look. Now it must be time for lunch, I suppose. Yep, riding home to lunch. Really was quite fun working with horses, except they did require a lot of looking after. When you put them in the shed they wanted, into the stable they wanted feeding, at least when you put the tractor away it didn't use any fuel. Oh, there's old farmer Bates there, I think he's going thatching, look he's got a thatching ladder on there, old man used to do all the thatching. Because there's that little bugger Jonathan, look, look at him. I don't think he's just chucking the sheaves on the floor, isn't he? Oh. oh, Rose wandering about the cows, another little country scene. Cows, oh look, there's the horse that I used to ride. Its name was Jerry. Oh, what's happening to Rose? He's massaging his nose. Yeah, having a really good massage. That's the stable just behind her where I used to have to look after the working horses. It's a fairish old load for a two-wheeler. There's another two-wheeler there, look, in my motorbike. That's my first motorbike. Used to call it one up, two down, because the hand change worked like that. First gear was up and the next two gears take the turn too, too tight. Ah, oh, stack's going up a bit now. Yep, pitching them uphill. Time he gets to the bottom of the... down. I think I'm just going off to work on the farm. But it's going now. Look, yep. 
those pads there's the old granary up on the stone in the background down the end of our road up the lane got a bit of wheel over there Who's that bicycling along there? Looks like Rose. Well, what's happened to the motorbikes? Ah, oh, here it comes. Going quite a speed, too. It's a Triumph. 250cc Triumph. Look, there's scrubby old cattle coming up the road, up the common in Whipsnade, up the hill towards the farm. Old car, Ford car. Oh, look, here I come. It's going quite well, that old bike. It did. Trouble is, you used to heat up the plug with a matchstick usually before you could get it to go. Ropey old shorthorn cattle with horns. And where they're going? As opposed to another. Oh, there's a real black and white one. There's Farmer Bates, dear old Charlie Bates. He was a dear old chap. Lived to be 94. That's the milk float. Up on Whipsnade Common. Expect they've finished the milk round. Oh, here I come. Look. There I am. That's it, just out the gate of the farmyard. You just have to be very careful going through the gates. Must take it wide, otherwise you have the gate post and it's terrible trouble. We used to break lots of gate posts and get into terrible trouble. The load would be quite a lift. Ah! Must have thought about the elevator. Standard Fordson. Oh, there's old Ambrosio, Italian prisoner of war up on the load there. He used to sing most beautifully when he got the cows in. Sort of, Italians were good chaps, but they were terribly lazy. He's working quite hard and quite skilled. Look, he's laying those sheaves quite nicely. Oh, there's the milk float pony Kit. Don't really need to wind her round and round. She'll walk round by herself, occasionally shout at her. Driving the elevator gear. Look, there's thrashing, thrashing straight out of the field. Look, with a real steam engine and it's not star pain. This must have been in 1942 or 43 in the war. Used to thrash a bit of corn straight out of the field and put it in the granary, I remember. Oh, milk float again. Yeah, give him a whack. Come on then. Come on, Kit. That's better. Come on. There we are. I don't know where they're going. That was Eric on there. He was one of the farmers. Now this I remember, a very wet harvest. We had to bring in the sprouted grains and re stook them up in the, in the stackyard. A funny little man there with the sheaves on is a prisoner of war, a German one called August. Best thing that ever happened to him was when he got captured by the British and came to England and would work on a farm. Oh, it's getting a fair old lift up there. Time we get to finish the stack, that poor bugger will be in the pitch hole and he'll have a hard time. Here we are, down there the corn's coming off. Be getting on a bit there. Must be coming towards the end of the war, I should think. There's Johnny. You see, he's bigger now. Just putting a sheet over the over the sacks of grain. They weren't west of England to that part of the thing. I've forgotten what they were. But a sack of wheat weighed two and a half hundredweight, I think, didn't it? Well, look, we got into an upright major with steels. Look. Yeah, this must have been towards the, after the end of the war. I think it's 46. Look, there's Rose sitting on the mudguard. Those spuds must be going within an inch of her bum. Good God, what would the safety man say? Look at the sitting there. You can almost see the spuds nearly scraping her bum. She's only got a... I don't know. I don't know how we didn't have more. Jonathan's there on that. Look, and Rose, what on earth would the safety man say today if he saw that going on? 
Rose must have been only about seven or eight. Pretty motley old load that. That can't be sheaves. I bet that was peas. We used to grow. They used to grow peas. They were terrible things to deal with. Try and load them onto a onto a load was awful. You had to hold a horse when a tractor went by. We weren't quite used to tractors by then. There's Jonathan. God, he must have advanced a lot. Look at that. And the tractor's got rubbers. Standard Fords are with rubbers. And old Eric, one of the farmer's sons, on the back. Sure, why they trust Jonathan to drive that? Save a lot of effort having an elevator. Except you have to move it about. Oh, Jonathan looks a bit as if he almost knows what to do. Standard Fords non rubbers. That must have been a big advance. I wonder where they got that trailer. Quite a decent trailer, really, isn't it? There's Rose. Look, she's quite. A, look at her. She's grown up a lot. I don't know how old she is there. Must be getting on 46, 47, I should think, or more. Two chaps loading. <laughs> 